Hey, so I thought um, instead of sitting at the house or um, in my office and recording this video and <laughs> revealing my most favorite whiskey of 2020, I'll do something a bit different. Go on a bit of a hike and talk about this particular whiskey and well, and the year that's been 2020. Well, whiskey, um, being born and raised in India, whiskey has always been a um, big part of our culture. I don't know if it is <laughs> Indian culture in particular, but definitely um, British culture. Obviously, the British were there in India for a very, very long time, and um, their mannerisms, their uh, habits, their way of enjoyment is deep rooted into the Indian culture, especially in the north where I come from. Um, I grew up in New Delhi and um, growing up I saw my dad, my uncles, you know, whiskey was a big part of, well, every celebration or uh, sadness as well because whiskey pay, plays um, a big part in sad moments as well. It's there for every moment and quite often now looking back at um, my uncles and my dad and everyone enjoying whiskey back in the day and <laughs> I sometimes feel I was drunk for the wrong reasons it was drunk more as a refreshment you know other than beer because growing up beer was uh, frowned upon if you were drinking beer you were often mocked at the parties for not being hard enough and not drinking whiskey but a lot of the whiskey was drunk with insane amount of ice and soda and dare I say coca-cola pepsi and any number of other sugary drinks and um Growing up, I never really saw anyone drinking neat whiskey, but um, I did see a lot of it being drunk and enjoyed endlessly. Well, single cast whiskeys, um, especially bottled at cast strength, um, I do enjoy them a lot more than your normal age stated 8, 10, 12, 14, 18, 30, 40 year old whiskeys because being a single barrel or a single cast whiskey, you know, all the flavors and the aroma, the beautiful smells, the essence of the whiskey is from that one cask. And um, lucky for me, I drink whiskey for flavors and smells, you know, the beautiful flavors and smells it represents. And um, drinking a single cast whiskey, you're getting the essence, that uh, spirit of one barrel, that particular wood, which has imparted the beautiful colors, the smells, um, doesn't matter where it's from, you know, it could be a, a first full bourbon cask or a lot of sherry cask or a wine cask or any number of other different types of casks. But that single barrel, the single cask, it's just something really, really amazing and it imparts flavors and smells in such a unique way, which quite rightly cannot be replicated. Not all barrels are the same. Every barrel is different and it just adds to the enjoyment significantly. Part of the reason why I wanted to record this video, um, not in my house or my office or somewhere comfortable was to obviously do a bit of hike. It is New Year's Day 2021. If you're watching this video today, Happy New Year. I hope 2021 <laughs> brings you joy and luck and is not even, not even a bit of a um, close to the shit show of what 2020 was but the reason why i came up today and did it here was because to come in and look at this big fella here you know uh the multi kauri tree they are native to new zealand um, unfortunately there's not a lot not a lot of them left standing not especially of that scale because 
Akauri tree grows very slowly, you know, they take up to a thousand years to fully mature. And that puts things into perspective and why I think about whiskey so much, you know, we we buy a bottle off the shelf and, you know, we drink it, it could be at 40%, 43%, could be at car strength, whatever. But um, often what is not thought about is where it's come from, where the roots were, you know, the barrels that were used, the barley that was used, um, where it was grown, you know, what era was it like, the, the, <laughs> the oak, how long did it grow for, you know, it might have been that oak tree that was used for the barrels might have been laid down while the tree might have started growing when your mum and dad or your grandparents might have been born and there's so much that goes into whiskey especially with the wood and that's why i wanted to show this ma ma mighty hakramata kauri um so beautiful majestic um and i've been up north and seen some big and this is definitely not even close to the biggest ones i've ever seen this is just a young fella, just like me. The why I talk about whiskey is probably the most interesting one. Um, for those of you who might know me intimately, I've been in the liquor industry for 16 years and I've been um, running a liquor store in a small town that way called Huntley for the last 16 years since October 2004 and working in a small town and with the interesting characters it brings uh, can be challenging but also a bit boring after a while you know I'm 36 and I've spent my big working in this beautiful little town which has amazing history in itself but being st stuck in the stall you might say one destination stall your uh circle of customer base is probably just well this big and for those of you who might know me intimately three years plus ago i started an online store 8 p.m to specifically sell whiskey online at a larger scale, get it out there, you know, get into the whole of New Zealand, um, and we've started to send it overseas as well. But it was purely to kill my boredom of sitting in a tiny, tiny store just down there, just a few kilometers down there, being bored. And luckily, because of Facebook and YouTube and Instagram, I could get the word out, not just to sell something, but connect with amazing people and talk about whiskey, you know, and sort of spread the word out and get attention of some really amazing people and I'm getting attention of some really really cool whiskey people or who I might say are whiskey gods and um, doing the 8 p.m. thing talking about whiskey and traveling around and doing the tastings it brings me immense satisfaction because I'm still working there <laughs> Thousand, thousand plus feet hike to record a whiskey review and what I personally think is the most beautiful view in the whole wide world almost if a tiny window cut into dense bush with no one around just a tiny window looking down at the market, mighty Wakata River and Hamilton at a distance and I believe that there is Mount Kakepuku near Tiamaru. Let's get into it.
I remember a long time ago, um, someone said to me, Ash, if you're going to be drinking your whiskey, and I know, like me, boy, you like whiskey neat, um, you got to drink the whiskey at room temperature. You don't want to put ice in your whiskey. You don't want to put nothing in your whiskey, if that's if you want to drink whiskey, for the flavors and smells. And that was a while ago, and it took me a while to get into it, you know, I mean, I don't necessarily have to drink whiskey to get drunk anymore. Um, my uni days are gone. I drink for the pleasure now. <laughs> Man, <laughs> I hike up a thousand feet to enjoy an interesting dram. And um, using this particular glass from Denver Lily, which is um, their glass glass version of this uh, Denver Lily, is my favorite whiskey glass. And um, luckily, they've done this one. The, I think they call it the Traveler. Well, the travel editor comes with this solid lid you can latch it onto your backpack and um just it <laughs> just it um happens to be we are in new zealand summer and um the little traveler has been bouncing around my backpack and um it's been keeping my whiskey warm so it's very nice on the nose well there it is I mean, if you didn't pick it up in the first couple of seconds of the video, <laughs> or if you haven't been uh, me talk about it endlessly at my whiskey taste things, um, this particular teeling is my whiskey of the year. Um, this is quite special for many reasons, and um, obviously I'm going to talk about it at length while I have no one around, in the best view in the world. So this is a single cast release from Teeling, first ever single cast release from Teeling for the New Zealand market. And Teeling being an Irish whiskey, and I'm already <laughs> feeling a thousand knives in the back of my head and my back. Because obviously I am a Scotch whiskey fanatic and I love Scotch whiskey. It's what I've drunk the most of over the years. Um, be the blends or single cast releases or everything and everything from 40 bucks to ten thousand dollars but i surprised myself when i decided and i had decided a long time ago and i told a bunch of people that this is going to be my whiskey of the air unless something really spectacular turns up right up to the 31st of december you know a mystery package which says hey ash try this <laughs> It's going to blow your mind. And that's why, I guess, in a weird way, I waited till today, the 1st of January 21, 2021, to make up my mind that really this one is what I want to say is my whiskey of the year. And I, I don't make these whiskeys, you know. I just drink them and obviously get the joy of talking about them and um, educating people. But um, this particular teeling... Um, has a strong kiwi connection uh, many of you obviously have bought a bottle and tried it like i said at the tastings i bought a bottle for yourself on my recommendation and um it's been a long time 13 years or nearly 13 years in an ex-bourbon battle and irish whiskey being triple distilled um very light very fruity very aromatic and the bourbon cask added a lot more of the honey and the vanilla and the sweetness of um from the ex bourbon cask but what teeling has done which has absolutely stolen my heart is um gone and recasked it i don't know if it's going to be the right way on the video but we'll find out they've gone and recasted it and casked it into a ex pinot noir barrel from new zealand in the central otago from rockburn who are a famous winery um, they do really, really good vines. I have enjoyed their Pinot Noir over the years. And um, being in a bourbon cast, being a triple distilled Irish whiskey, light and fruity, approachable, easy drinking, and putting into a Pinot Noir barrel has added just an amazing touch to this whiskey. So on the nose, um, it lures you in. With a bit of sweetness, a hint of sweetness, not a lot. But that Pinot Noir barrel uh, aging has added these amazing 
ripe cherry sort of character and I remember reviewing it many many weeks months ago when it first came into New Zealand and um, I thought to myself obviously I like peated whiskies and I like peated whiskies that have um, been aged in the Oloroso sherry cast and the reason being is um, they tend to be quite dry quite spicy and obviously the smoke and the peat lingers the flavors or if anything um, just adds another dimension and I mean my whiskey of the year for the last year for 2019 was a Ben Riach peated Oloroso 22 year old single cask and um, why this one resonated so much that Pinot Noir barrel aging has added this amazing dryness but also depth of aroma on the nose I mean I could nose this endlessly and I quite often do that when I'm enjoying my whiskey you know watch a whole episode of Netflix movie and I would maybe sip it only one or two times in an hour but just bring it to the nose and just savor it and um, being bottled at a very generous 58 um, percent thank you Teeling for doing that because um, I love whiskies that are cast friends no water added because just leaves whiskey um, in its natural state you know we as a connoisseur get to experience it for what it's worth you know there's no extra dimension added it has come out of the barrel straight into this glass and onto my nose beautiful on the palate um you get this amazing bouquet of tropical fruit characters um followed by an odd dry note which could be from the wine aging or wine cask aging or finishing um sort of like a tanniny character but on the set mm, really juicy really flavorsome and again being cast strength on the palate leaves you drooling very rewarding um it's got this amazing depth and i mean i've been sitting here for a good part of 15 minutes blissfully nosing and sipping this whiskey um and the finish is super long it just keeps going keeps rewarding you with more of the sweetness um that dryness as well which i enjoy um and there's just a hint is a raisin i don't want to say a raisin but just a hint of immense sweetness not a sickly sweetness if that makes sense you know i'm not saying honey and vanilla but just a depth of sweetness that just lingers for a very long time there you go whiskey of the year 2020 it's irish whiskey i don't mind but some of my friends are gonna hate me but it's okay it was COVID year or whatever you want to call it 2020 the shit show it became um there just hasn't been that much amazing single car scotch whiskey that's come to our shores this luckily turned up about seven eight months ago so around may or june and well since may june we haven't really had much new single cast releases from scotland because um obviously they're struggling with their supply uh, plenty of whiskey there don't get me wrong there is no shortage of whiskey but um just delays it on bottling labeling and shipping obviously and i do believe in 2021 we're going to get all of the backlog so i'm really looking forward to it and hopefully a scottish whiskey will bowl me over just some <laughs> comments around why you know why why name something as whiskey of the year and i mean it's only the second time i've done it um i think it just because it just gives you something to latch on to you know i mean i've shared the shit out of this whiskey i've drunk bought and sold nearly 150 of these bottles out of the 304 306 that came into new zealand and i've shared it at pretty much all of my tastings 
because there's something I like and I recommend to people and they try it and luckily they've had great joy out of drinking this particular whiskey and um, it brings me joy that something I like is making other people happy and um, is bringing joy and pleasure to their day especially this year this particular year that's just finished last night if the whiskey can put a smile on someone's face or make them happy, dream it. Finish by, first of all, offering an apology because A, I'm outdoors, I'm not in my office, so recording all of this on a sh shaky camera at best and um, obviously not ideal conditions audio-wise, but if you want to be nice to me, I'll tell you where this is, unless you already figure it out. <laughs> How about we come do a whiskey tasting here? I see two benches, an early morning hike, and we look down at that. And also, I just wanted to raise a toast to my grandfather, who unfortunately passed away after a very long, successful, successful life in 2020. And he passed away in India in March. And I have regrets around not being able to share one last dram with him. I haven't seen him for six, seven years, because I haven't been to India for a long time, and I do have regrets for not seeing him towards the end and trying one more whiskey with him, because he loved his whiskey. Um, so here's a toast to him, Captain Kabul Singh Pamar, and here's a um, request from me. Go and see someone you love and care for, your dad, your grandfather, your uncle, your brother, your auntie, sister, sister your mate, whoever, you enjoy drinking whiskey with, and it's so easy now. You don't have to be in the same room. You can do it on Zoom or Messenger or whatever. And enjoy our drama too. Have a chat. Otherwise, otherwise I'll see you a bit later. Hopefully with a lot more content in 2021. I'm going to try a bit harder to do more reviews. This workload in 2020 has been insane. I'm going to work hard to reduce it and share more content. Otherwise, Happy New Year again, and have a very good 2021.